we got two big top 25 matchups this weekend. Oh, and I feel and like I was thinking we could add a third the Nebraska okay. Colorado game. Absolutely. We'll talk about that one for sure. But this first one here, about high noon. I hate that they always play all of Michigan's big game or all the Big Ten, the big games at noon. I don't know why we're doing this, this archaic style here where they don't want to play night games and stuff. But this game should be prime time for sure. But I think the line is far too high. You got Texas giving the defending national champion Michigan Wolverines seven points at the big house right here. I don't feel like in any universe Michigan should be getting this many points right here. So for me, it feels like the line is too high, and I think I'm going to be all over the Texas Longhorns. They looked better last week. I know Michigan still won by three touchdowns, but did not cover the spread against the Fresno State team that really has no business being on the same field as them. So for me, Michigan, a lot of questions here. You're replacing all everything. You've had all the off-the-field stuff, the sign-stealing scandals, no more Harbaugh. I, I just feel like this line is way too high, and I think Texas is about to blow the doors off these guys. What do you think, Bob? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it was it was under three at some points in the offseason. So I had planned on taking Texas, uh, and then the line went over seven. And the so my view is, you know, Texas blew out Colorado State. Colorado State's offense is uh, a mummy offense, so it's not about vertical downfield passing. So it doesn't threaten Texas' main vulnerability, which has been vertical passing routes. Problem for Michigan is they showed no sign of being able to do any kind of vertical passing last week. Now, the, the word out of Michigan camp is that Everything was super vanilla last week, that that's not their real game plan. That's not going to be their offensive scheme throughout the year, that they are were all in on beating Texas this week at home, that that they see their season to make the playoffs as a three-game season, Ohio State, Oregon, and Texas. And they consider Texas the easiest of the three, given the situation. They, they get them at home. They get them early in the year. Now, the... So the but the big question with Michigan, Michigan's defense looks elite against a, a decent Fresno State squad. Uh, it, there's no reason to believe that defense won't be elite again. They brought back enough personnel. They have they in Martindale. They have one of the better defensive coaches in in, in football from the pro rank back to the college ranks. Uh, that's worked very well at Michigan. So I don't see any reason to believe uh, that the defense won't be a top five defense again this year. Offense is where all the questions are. Mm -hmm. No Harbaugh, no offensive line uh, in terms of returning talent, uh, no quarterback, no running, no top running back, no top wide receivers, one really super talented tight end court in Loveland. And what people were worried about was two low level recruits as quarterback. So could they hit again uh, with some of their development in talent? Quarterback's not usually a place that develops in talent. They either have it or they don't coming into out of high school. And it looked like they had none out there. You know, Tuttle, the transfer they brought in is injured, isn't even available. So it's Orgy who they appear to be scared to let throw the ball because apparently he can't throw the ball. That was the word out of camp all, all, all the time. And the other quarterback is very much a game, a weak game manager who can't run. So, I mean, even Cade McNamara could run some. So they, they've, a quarter, they either go with the stiff that can throw a little bit or the runner who can't really throw. It wouldn't surprise me. We're going to find out a lot about this new Michigan coaching staff. Though a lot of them are holdovers from Harbaugh's staff, They're, it's still a different mindset than what Harbaugh had. If, if I were Michigan, I would uh, go to an all-run oriented offense. Have Orgy mm -hmm. run a version of the triple option. That right. I, I, I'm still not convinced because on the opposite side of the aisle, you have Texas lost two elite world-class defensive tackles. They have good tackles coming back, yes. Are they anything like those tackles? No. So I think they can be run on. Uh, I the And I think that's what you want to do if you're Michigan. You shorten the game. You limit their offense's possession. Uh, and it probably plays to your, your only available strength. Because the receivers also look terrible. So they yeah. basically have one tight end to throw the ball to. Right. So I think the, if the smart Michigan game plan, probably play Orgy, run the ball a ton, see what happened, and lean on your defense. And if yeah. you look at Texas, the reason why I have doubts about Texas, they keep saying that they have you know, one of the most talented teams in the country. My talent rankings don't have them as that. They have them as a second tier. They're not in the same tier as Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama. You know, the, They don't have 40-plus four high four, high five-star guys, NFL-type mm -hmm. recruits like Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State do. They're basically at the same level as Penn State, right, right. to give you an idea. So 
uh, at least from a you know my recruiting rankings perspective, talent perspective. So the other thing is, it, it's like everybody's expecting Texas to not miss a beat, even though losing their top two defensive tackles that were rare talent, and not miss a beat. This is one of those contradictions you get that we talked about in the last episode, uh, where they'll say one quarterback, one wide receiver is great for the team he transferred to, but he didn't matter for the team he left. It's like, how does that work? Yeah, how does um, that work? <laughs> uh, you look at Texas, how is it their receivers are highly touted in the NFL this year as going to be game breakers for NFL teams, but it doesn't matter that Texas lost them. It's like right. one of those statements is not true. Either these receivers are not world beaters, uh, like Xavier Worthy for the Chiefs, or they are, and Texas ain't replacing that level of talent. They may right. have good talent, but it ain't going to be the same. Mm. So I'm not sold on Texas wide receivers. Texas star running back is out for the year. Backup is solid, good, but nothing spectacular. They weren't great running the ball last week against Colorado State. So it's like, okay, I'm supposed to get all excited about the fact that Colorado State has no secondary. So Quinn Ewers could just go boom, 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 boom mm -hmm. down the field. And I've never been a huge Quinn Ewers fan. I think he's the backup of the NFL. I don't think he's a starter. So now he goes to the big house against one of the most talented defenses they've ever faced. So uh, I, for the purpose of the show, I would still probably lean Texas because they have such great doubts about Michigan's offense. And I don't know whether they'll go to a smart offensive game plan or not, but I wouldn't rush to the window to bet the Longhorns. Yeah, it feels to me the, the line just feels weird. I don't feel like Michigan should ever be getting that many points right there. And you're, you're right. If Michigan's going to have a chance in this game, I feel like they do have to be able to run the football, control the line of scrimmage, and shorten the game up there because I do think there's a talent disparity. I know Michigan still has a lot of talent on their team and all that, but I think from an overall standpoint up and down the roster, I think Texas definitely gets the advantage right there. So I think for Michigan, anytime you're kind of at a disadvantage from a talent standpoint, you do have to go to a schematic look and try to figure out a way to shorten up the game and give yourself a way to win that thing. So I think I'm still leaning Texas in that one right there just because I feel like the line's too high.